All right, y'all. I'm here with my man George. How you doing? I'm doing great. So yeah, tell the tell the folks, George. How was your your upbringing? How was your childhood? My upbringing. I was born in Prince George, Maryland. Uh, my father left me when I was two years old. Then my mother had two jobs. My grandparents raised me. My mother's father. All right, y'all. I'm here with my man George. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So yeah, tell the tell the folks, George. How was your your upbringing? How was your childhood? My upbringing. I was born in Prince George, Maryland. Uh, my father left me when I was two years old. Then my mother had two jobs. My grandparents raised me. My mother's father and my father's fa uh, father raised me while my father was absent. Uh, I lived in Baltimore, Maryland until I was nine years old until my grandfather died. And I moved down here with my mother on Broad Street in Richmond, Virginia. I came from Baltimore, Maryland. I moved down here. I went to schooling out here. Uh, I did all my school out in Richmond, Virginia in my elementary and nine in fourth grade in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. I did the rest of my upbringing up down here. Uh, I quit school in the ninth grade and I uh, went to my GED. I passed my GED. It took me twice to take it. And I went to school for it and I passed it. And I passed my, and I went to college for uh, trade school and I got two trades, carpentry and roofing. I was a carpenter for a very long time and a roofer for a very long time. But I fell off a roof when I was 28 years old and I broke my back in three places. And I can't really work, I can't pick up no more than 20 pounds now. I retired at 36 years old. And I just got recently got on the street the last four years. My rooming house was closed down, the government closed it down because of the COVID and unfit, unfit building. And they closed it down, it was on just stairs on Weber Road. And uh, the guy's name was Lester, but he never talked to nobody about it. He, the police kicked everybody out and made everybody home. Hey, George, is it is it any drug abuse or alcohol? Oh, no drug abuse or alcohol. I quit drinking alcohol when I was 22 years old. I was married twice. I got three children, full grown children in their 30s. We got five grandkids. And my oldest grandkids, 22 years old, were mixed race. So my daughters, my daughters uh, went out with black gentlemen and married them and had my uh, grandson and my granddaughter. And my sister did the same thing. She married my best friend, who was a black friend, in California and had his kid. So three quarters of my family are black. All the white people are dead. Okay. It just, we all passed away, grew old, and I'm the only son in the family. And I have no brothers. I have a half-sister. She passed away in a car crash. Uh, a drunk driver hit her. So that basically made me shy away from alcohol because I know what it can do to people. And being homeless, it's really hard on being homeless you got to put up with the winter time and the uh, hot and the heat. I'm bipolar psychosis, so I can't stand it too cold, but I can't stand it too hot. Too hot makes me schizophrenia. I have schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, bi not bipolar, but schizophrenia. And it's really hard adjusting to people. Because I hear voices and I see things, and it's real hard just adjusting to other lives. People around me, so I really stay alone. How how long have you had schizophrenia? Oh, uh, ever since I was 28. Ever since I fell off the roof. I fell off the roof four and a half stories. I hit my head and I broke my back in three places. So uh, schizophrenia from 28 till now. Oh uh, man, um, do you? What's some of the things that happen when you start going through that? Ah, uh, what things go happen on things? I hear a lot of voices and I see things. Uh, I go to church, so I try to work things out to the church and go by their rules. Because I guess yeah, schizophrenia people tend to listen to their voices. I try to listen to my voice that I speak. When I speak, I try to keep that voice in my head so I can relate to other the other voices. They're not the voices I want to listen to. I want to hear my own voice or somebody else's voice so I can. It can lead in my head, so I can have something to lead off of. I'm more of a follower than a leader now, because I did bust my skull pretty hard. Wow. So, like, um, what's your plans for the future, George? My future, I just came from the Daily Planet. They're looking for me a place to live. Uh, they're trying to get me up into a place. They told me that they called me today. I went there today at 11 o'clock. 
and they set up an appointment for me with his visitors off, but she said to call me and tell me when I can move into a home again with Caritas or another home in shelter. I'm at the care I'm at the window shelter now. I've been there ever since it opened up. Uh, it's my first year there. I stayed in the motel for three years, but the motel went up to sixteen hundred to fourteen hundred and I only make thirteen hundred on my government check. So I have to fly a shine to make the difference. Right now, I pay child support on my last child, pay interest on that. So I have to be homeless and pay child support and pay by the law. It's really hard. Then you gotta put up with people looking at you like you're scum, you're homeless, you're nothing. Actually, I worked for millionaires before. I had a really good life. I just COVID stopped me. I have a lung, I have lung cancer, and I can't breathe that well. So I can't wear a mask at work. So that keeps me from working. Oh man! So people, people, some people treat you really bad on the yeah, street. Yeah, they treat you really bad. Like, what's some of the stuff that they, they say? They look at you like you're scum, like you got a homeless sign in your hand, and they have no respect for people like that. And they don't understand people out there do have college experience, and if they're down on their luck. There's a government system. Another government gave us COVID, and it brought this government down to its knees. And the government had no choice but to let people go and survive with the street. And basically the government let people go to die. Wow. They close your room and house to die. I mean, it's like the government giving us a death warrant for being uh, disabled, or being not being able to take care of ourselves. So it's like a death sentence. And I just try to be as nice as I can, I'm gonna live my life out, and I don't have COVID. I got all three of my shots, got my juice shots, my booster shots, and I just don't go play by your brother. Because you can catch COVID again off of somebody else just by them giving you a soda or them sneezing on you, coughing on you. you know, even, if, even though you got the shot, it doesn't mean you can't catch it. Because you can't catch it. They had both of my shots and somebody else gave me a COVID and I had to get a booster shot to get over that. So it almost killed me. It almost died a few times. It was really hard, really hard. Just don't go through Jackson Ward, don't go through Church Hill, and you'll be all right. <laughs> hey, hey, Joyce, thank you for your time, man. You're blessed. All right, have a blessing.